Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a full review on the PS270 by Grios. Right guys, get yourselves comfortable because it's gonna be a long, in-depth review on the Grios PS270. Right, so when you purchase this brush, if you're ordering one from Amazon or wherever you're sourcing it from, these brushes will turn up in a cardboard box like that. So this is the box that it turns up in, guys. And then inside this box, the actual airbrush comes in a plastic case just a cheap plastic case, nothing fancy. You will get an airline with the airbrush. This is a small airline. I never use these airlines. I've got the, the next one up, which is the braided airline with the quick connect for the airbrush, but you'll get the attachments that you can use this airline if you're coming down to a small fitment. It's all in the box, guys. You also get a little span, so you can take the front end of the airbrush off that comes in the box and you get some instructions in there as well. So that's how it will turn up when you order one. I'll put you a link in the description on where I've purchased this brush from, the best prices on this site. So I'd go with them guys and stick with them. They do an array of airbrush stuff. You can buy all your parts. That's a helicopter going by, excuse the noise. So yeah, you get all your parts nice and cheap from this place that I'll put a link in the description for you. In this video today, I'll give you a full rundown on this. I've now owned this brush for about five months and I've given it some work. So I wanted to do this review after a bit of time I've spent with this brush so I can tell you my in-depth thoughts on it. As I said, five months in, I've done portraits with this. Paint-wise, I've sprayed solvents with it. I've paid, I've sprayed water-based acrylics with it. So it's had a, a variety of paints gone through it and cleaning products I've put through it as well. So I can give you a little rundown on what I've put through it and how the brushes adapted and took to this paint and cleaners that I've used in it. So the actual brush itself is a full chrome body. They're quite weighty in your hand. They're quite a long brush. I've got other eye waters here which come up quite a bit smaller. This is a top cup airbrush. You get a cap on the top, that comes off. You can drop, you drop your paint in there and you can put your cap back on like that. This one is a double action airbrush. So double action means you will press down for air and then you want your paint to come out, you'll just pull back on the trigger and that releases the paint out the front of the airbrush. You have got a MAC valve, as I want to call it, on the front. So you can dial your air pressure in here. Normally you would put your airline in like that on the bottom. And if you've not got that on the airbrush, you'd be dialing your air pressure in on your main line coming in. You can also buy these, which come on the bottom of the quick connects. You can buy the adapter and I can also dial the air pressure in on that. But I leave that fully open and just use the one on the airbrush. It seems to work a lot better, guys. These ones on the front of the airbrushes are really good. They're nice and accurate, and it's nice and easy when you're spraying, you can just dial your air in to what you want. If you've got a, an opaque that's quite thick, just open that air up, a bit more air through, and if you've got a transparent, just dial that in, and you'll get your, your airflow right for when you're painting. On this brush as well, you've got a adjuster at the back and what this does is you can if you dial that right the right the way in the trigger basically stops and if you open that up that releases the trigger and releases basically your paint so if, you, if you've used a big spray gun you know what the two dials are on the back of that you've got one for your fluid similar sort of thing which just miniaturized down and put into an airbrush so that will do your fluid Let's more fluid out, dial it in, let's less out. So it's like a big spray gun, which is small, a lot smaller. So that's the brush, guys. This is a 0.2. So if you're a beginner, 
A 0.2 is a good all-round brush to go for. You can get good paint coverage with it and you can also get some cracking detail with the 0.2 as well. Some of these real smaller needles like the 0.18 on the microns and the harder and sting that go down to 0.15. If you get one of them brushes, you can be fiddling around with your paint, getting your paint mixes right, because you've really got to thin them down for them brushes. A lot of them smaller needle brushes offer you real fine detail when you're going on small miniature things like that. But a 0.2, if you've seen any of my previous videos, I've used this for portraits, I've used it on automotive and it is absolutely fine. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to the next stage. I'll get another camera set up, so you're gonna get two angles on this guys. You'll get a close up of the airbrush and me spraying and then you'll get another shot and I'll do a joint screen for you. So you get two camera angles on what I'm gonna do next. So I'll click the airline in, drop some opaque in, we'll go for an opaque test first. I'm not going to do a portrait or anything like that, I'm just going to do some basic airbrush techniques, things that you will learn. I'll do some lines, I'll do some dot work, and I'll just show you how this brush performs with two styles of paint. I'll get some um, solvent as well, and I'll show you what it's like with solvent paint. So, I'll see you lot in the next step. Right guys, I've put a bit of transparent shading grey. This is golden high flow acrylics that I've got in this. There's no water in it, it's just straight transparent. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna do a simple test. I'm gonna do some lines, do some dot work, show you a little bit of shading on the coverage on this airbrush. We'll do a little dialing on the MAC valve at the front and I'll drop the pressure down and we'll see how it performs that way. So I'm just gonna do some simple lines Simple dot work. Let's get into it, guys. So I'm just going to pull back on the brush. So that's full back on the brush. And that atomizes the paint really well there, guys. That's really atomizing it nice. There's no splatters or heavy spots. So that's really doing that a nice job on that. We'll do some small, tiny little dot work. And again, that atomizes really, really nice. It's a nice, comfortable brush in your hand when you're working. Triggers nice and responsive. We're running this about, it's about 20, 22, 23 PSI coming out the airbrush. And that's some real small dots. So we've gone from real tiny dots along here, and then you've got your bigger pass of the dots along this side. I'll do some line work now, and just do some dagger strokes and things like that, and just give you a little run through of that. So atomizing that really nice, nice lines, and then we'll go full on that. You can get quite a bit of coverage with this brush, as it's 0 0.2, as you can see now that's really putting that paint down. Just drop a little bit more paint in. And you can get some super fine lines. Like that. So it's atomizing the transparent, really nice. You'll find when you use this airbrush, 
it's nice and responsive, it's comfortable in your hand. I've worked with this brush for three to four hours at a time on a portrait and you tend to get no finger ache. You don't get feel like you, you're cramping up in your hand. It's nice and comfortable. The trigger's nice and soft. You can adjust these, you can take the back off and if you tighten that up, you can tighten the tension in the spring so you can get a little bit more tension if you like that in your trigger. So that just makes the trigger a little bit more springy and tighter. But as you can see, it performs really nice. And I always tend to, when I'm spraying with a top cup airbrush, most artists like side feed where the cup's on the side because people tend to not, people tend to look down the brush and you then look at the front of the brush going down and then you can see where you're going. But if I always tend to, when I've got one of these in my hand, I always tend to slightly tilt the brush and then just slightly look down the side of the brush so you'd be looking down this side on the tilt and then you can aim and see the front there. That's how I sit with that and I find that really comfortable, it's not a problem. Or I'll just slightly look to the side, so I'll be this side of the brush, and you can just get in and do that. So that's a test on the transparent dot work. You can get real super fine dots, super fine lines. You get a nice bit of coverage with a 0.2. So what I do is I get this little blast through now, clean it through. I usually clean my brushes with water. If I've got any stubborn paint, I'll just drop a little bit of thinners and then get a cotton bud, bit of thinners, give it a clean out, undo the back, pull the needle back, bit of thinners in there, blast it through, cotton bud, job done. Easy to clean, guys. So what we'll do now is we'll go with a bit of Opaque, this is a black, carbon black, opaque. Same pressure. And I always use it with the, the cap. Just hold that up to the camera, you get your cap there. I always take the cap off. Because no matter what paint you've got, you will get tip dry on the needle. And it's nice about these as well, you've got quite a bit of needle exposed on the front so you can pinch and clean. But I would recommend you get two toothbrushes with the heads of the toothbrushes, put them together, bit of masking tape around the body of the toothbrush, and then you can just run the front of the airbrush in the toothbrush bristles, and that'll clean your tip, tip dry really, really well, guys. That works really well. So we're gonna drop a bit of opaque down now. I'll do the same test. We'll do some little dot work. So tiny dots again. So you can get really down with this brush on the little dots. We'll do some coverage on that. And that, that's atomizing the opaque just as well as it did be transparent, not a problem at all with this brush. Same air pressure coming through. Just getting them dots down on the small dots and on the coverage. We'll do a bit of line work on coverage. And again, atomizing nice, nice and clean. Good paint coverage down on that. Not a problem at all. This brush handles opaques absolutely fine. We'll do some little dagger strokes. And it's just really smooth, guys. It does a nice dagger stroke with that trigger. Airbrushing is basically trigger control. Once you've learnt your trigger control, that is the main thing for airbrushing. You'll learn your dot work, concentrate on your dots, your lines, your dagger strokes, 
just keep practicing that and then going in and then just like dot work your lines your dagger strokes once you've got them mastered you'll be able to go in on a piece of artwork and you'll feel more comfortable because you know you can perform that dot or that line or that dagger stroke for when you want to do shading or if you're doing like an eye and you need to get a little dot in where that pupil is and things like that you'll get comfortable and you'll get just more confident on going in on a piece of artwork you won't be scared on going in on a piece there's a lot of people that i know that pick an airbrush up chuck some paint in think it's really easy and they go wallop like that and it just does horrible messes like that and you get spider webbing it's getting that trigger control that's all it is it's getting that muscle memory into your finger say so you can just pick the airbrush up you know exactly how far to pull back with the paint you'll start playing around with your air pressures dialing it in and you'll know on thin paint or just try and knock that air pressure in air pressure in a bit a bit of thicker paint or just give it a little bit more air and you'll see so once you get your test panels up like this just keep practicing on paper going in doing squiggles doodling you've not got to be able to draw people say oh i can't even draw a stick man you don't need to when you're airbrushing as long as you learn these techniques and you learn shading on how to shade how to look at a picture look at where the highlights come in look at where the shadows are once you start mastering that you can get your pencil outlines in through trace down papers and things like that and basically have another image next to you and just start following and you'll you'll learn them techniques where to put the shades where to put the dots and things like that it'll all come in time it takes time i've been airbrushing now 12 years and I'm, I'm learning stuff every day, different tricks, different little things. You go on YouTube and you see someone pops up a video and it's something different. It's like, oh, that's a good idea. Or So I'm just here to help guys as much help as I can with my videos and my reviews. It's all to help you guys out if you want to get into this journey like I did. There wasn't a lot around on YouTube at the time when I first got into this. I was only following a couple of people but you look on YouTube now and there is everybody's doing it so I'm just giving you my sort of process of the way I learned through the artists that I followed and the courses that I went on I've done courses with well-known artists and I've learned a lot along the way so I'm just gonna push what I've learned guys onto you so you can learn something out of this and hope it helps you along the way so that's the opaque and that's the transparent that i've dropped down on this piece and it's performed absolutely perfect on both paints at that pressure i will knock the pressure down now it's probably it's probably about 10 psi and you'll see in this shot here that is little dots again not a problem. Little bit spittier because this is opaque as you'll see in that shot there. Little bit grainy. So I would probably knock that back with a bit of water now and you'll get rid of that grainy mark there. But you turn the pressure back up and then that's fine again. That's not as grainy now. It's just because it's that opaque, it's a little bit thicker. But you'll see that you'll you'll see that grainy look and you think right i've just got to thin that down a bit a couple of drops of water job done so that's all it is guys is getting your air pressures right getting your paint mixes right your consistency right people always say mix it to the thickness of milk just go for you whatever works for you i mean if you can get an opaque and it runs perfectly all right straight out the brush like this has on a little bit higher pressure go with it if you need to thin it down a couple of drops of reducer or water the reason why i use golden acrylics is because it's just thinned down with water you've not got to buy all these fancy reducers like you'll buy a pot of paint like that these come out at about 12 13 pound a bottle like that 
but then all you've got to do is mix it with water to thin it down. Other brands of paint, you'll buy something like that for the same price, and then you've got to spend another eight, nine pound on their reducer to thin that paint down. So I think cost-wise, Golden Acrylics, I've used it since day dot, and I've been airbrushing 12 years, and this paint has worked on everything. It has worked on automotive, I've used it on paper, plastics, Every piece of airbrush work I've done, I've stuck with that brand. It's not let me down. Brilliant paint. It's the pieces that I've done from old and seen these pieces present. There's not been any color fades or anything like that. It, the colors have stayed, stayed really strong after it's been clear coated. So it's been absolutely fine, guys. So I'll just stick to this paint. I've tried a lot of other paints in the past. I've tried the Wicked, the Auto Airs, I've basically tried all of them and I'm just sticking to the one I know. You'll find if, you, if you're painting with Wicked and you really like that or the Createx Illustration, things like that, you'll stick to the brand that you like and you get used to. So I'm just not pushing Golden onto you because there's hundreds of brands out there. But me personally, 12 years in, that's what I use, that's what I stick to and I'll always use Golden and Hot Blow Acrylics. So, I'm going to wrap this review up now, guys, on the PS270 by Griots. This brush is £116 for a 0.2mm airbrush. And my thoughts on this, I've got the Iwata Micron, I've got an array of Iwata. And after picking this up, and for me, using this brush because you have got, it slants back here. It's quite a long brush, so I've got quite big hands. So it sits really comfortable in your hand. It's balanced and weighted really nice. The trigger's really smooth. As you can see on that test panel, it's got not a problem with acrylics on transparent and opaque. They're easy to clean out. The parts on these, if you need to replace them, if you've got like a, if you dink your needle and things like that. If you look on the site that I'm going to put a link on in the bottom, you'll see that the actual parts for this brush are very, very reasonable. So it's not going to break the bank when you buy one. So you can get the parts nice and easy. They're nice and cheap. As I said about this for four to five months now, and it has been absolutely spot on. So if you're starting out, and you're after a really good airbrush that's going to do everything you want it to do. It'll get your paint down. It'll get you your detail that you need. And the bonus with this brush is you've got a air regulator at the front. And these work really, really well, guys. I've done portraits with this and gone in when I've needed to knock that pressure down. And it is so accurate on the front end. Really nice just to dial that in as you work in. You're not going to lean across to your main airline and fiddle around getting your pressure. You On the fly as you're working, you can just dial that as you want. So yeah, my thoughts on this brush, the Griot's range, really, really good. I'm going to do another review for you on the Griot's PS290 and also the Griot's PS771. I own that one as well. So I'll do you the Griot's range on the reviews. I'm going to do the Iwata range reviews and I'm going to do the Harder and Stingbeck range full review as well. So I'll basically do exactly what I've done today, give you a talk through, drop some paint in it, blast it on a piece of paper, you'll see what it's doing and yeah, that's what my reviews are going to be like guys. Just honest opinions on an airbrush, I'm not going to hide anything from you, it's my honest opinion on it and I would highly recommend this. I really, really would. I'd highly recommend the Griot's PS270 by Mr. Hobbit, and it's a 0.2. Great brush. I hope you've enjoyed this video and got something out of it along the way. Don't forget, guys, click that subscribe, press that notification so you don't miss out on any more up and coming videos. I'll drop them links in the comment part at the bottom where you can pick one of these up and just give it a look for yourself, guys. Go on the site check the brush out. If you're after a brush, 
get one. You will not look back and you won't regret it. You'll be coming back on this channel and giving me a thumbs up on this review because it's a cracking brush. So thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next one.